So I hope everyone can see my slides. And welcome to Operating FoundationDB on Kubernetes. So here, I'm a FoundationDB site reliability engineer here at uh, Apple, where we run FoundationDB at a massive scale. And I work in the Kubernetes ecosystem since the end of 2014. And just a few words about um, FoundationDB itself. So FoundationDB is a distributed transactional key value store, which is um, great for read-only or read-heavy workloads. And on the right side, you can see uh, an architectural diagram of FoundationDB. And you can also read more about it in the FoundationDB paper that I can share later on in the Slack channel. And the important thing here is that we have a separated transaction and storage system. And when I refer to the transaction system in this talk, I actually mean the transaction system and the log system together. Um, as of the 7.1 release, there is only limited DNS support. And the idea is to have um, DNS support for um, the connection string. And that's just something that is a little bit more tricky in a Kubernetes environment where like your pods can get rescheduled, um, recreated, and get new pod IPs, for example. Another interesting fact is that most major and minor versions are not um, compatible, which means you have to upgrade all versions or all processes at the same time. Um, otherwise, they may not able to like communicate together. Otherwise, FoundationDB offers um, automatic recovery and data dis redistribution, which means if any process or node or um, fault um, domain, for example, um, receives a failure, the system is able to recover itself. And everything is open source in FoundationDB under the Apache 2 license. And the Kubernetes operator that we built at Apple is also open source. So you're welcome to take a look at that and try it out. And the idea is to run um, FoundationDB clusters on top of Kubernetes and currently it's managing bare Kubernetes pods, PVCs and services. But it's something we want to may um, re-architect in the future. Um, all required tooling for the operator is currently injected at runtime by init containers. So all FoundationDB libraries that are required or um, command line tooling will be actually copied by the init container inside of the Kubernetes operator, which makes it a little bit easier um, to roll out um, the, the operator and have a lean or a small um, image actually. And one interesting thing is how we actually do upgrades with the Kubernetes operator, because I guess that's something that's a little bit special compared to most other operators in the stateful world. And the first step that we actually do is that we update the sidecar container. So we have a sidecar in the main container and the main container actually runs the FoundationDB process. And the sidecar container that is updated then copies the new version in the main container. And then the FoundationDB monitor configuration file will be adjusted to point to the new binary. This has the benefit that we can all now restart all processes in the cluster at the same time. And then they just pick up the new configuration and they just take the dynamically copied um, version of the, um, FoundationDB. And we actually take benefit here of the fact that you can update um, images in a running pod, for example, without requiring the pod to restart um, fully. And this is the benefit that we actually can orchestrate um, the way how we update our um, clusters and ensure that all or at least the majority of processes are updated and have the new binary available. After that, we replace the whole transaction system in a single step. And that's normally pretty fast because your log system shouldn't have um, a multiple of terabytes, for example. Otherwise, your database is probably lag lagging behind. And that has the benefit that we actually like recover or reduce the number of so-called recoveries in FoundationDB. And the, the experience from the user perspective is uh, much better than when we would do, for example, a rolling upgrade um, in the transaction system. And in parallel, we recreate all um, storage pods with the new image. And that is um, per default done by fall domain, so zone by zone, in a rolling upgrade fashion. And there is a lot, or the operator itself supports multiple different ways how you can um, run FoundationDB on Kubernetes. Um, so for example, you can run FoundationDB across uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters, or you can run it across multiple namespaces or across multiple um, different Kubernetes clusters in the HA configuration. And each configuration requires actually that all um, processes can communicate with together. So you have to need uh, a mesh communication 
And each Kubernetes cluster has a dedicated operator and those operators are synchronizing um, over FoundationDB itself and they're writing to a specific um, key value space. And one thing that we discovered is that we have to, to provide a way how to make debugging easier. And that was the reason why we built it pretty early on a uh, kubectl plugin. Um, one of the most important features here is um, kubectl FTP analyze that will print out all potential issues with the clusters. And that was in practice a, a super useful feature or pattern to help um, operators to, uh, or human operators to figure out why the cluster is in, in a non-desired state, for example. And how do we gain actually confidence? Um, the, the first thing is um, pretty obviously like um, write unit tests and integration tests. And, uh, and the next step is then write end-to-end -end tests and actually run multiple chaos um, experiments to gain more confidence and understand how your operator will behave under different um, failure room, um, um, domains. And besides of that, we have multiple safety checks in our um, operator just to be sure that we not get in a state where we possibly lose data or availability because that is something that you don't want to lose um, as a data service, obviously. And some of the future works are actually like already in progress, like for example, the pod topology spread actually supports, I think in the new Kubernetes release, um, the minimum fault domains. Um, we also like try to implement a coloring approach that will um, reduce the number of logical fault domains and allows us to like map logical fault domains on actual physical um, fault domains to give us a little bit more of uh, flexibility how we can run the foundation to be uh, on top of Kubernetes. We also want to prevent additional uh, accidental um, deletions of clusters and pods. Um, I think we heard that in a previous talk and we just don't want to, that someone writes kubectl delete ftb dash dash all, for example, and then all your foundationdb clusters are um, gone. Um, but it's also a little bit more to think about how you actually implement that because webhooks can be, uh, um, give your Kubernetes cluster in instability if you're not like programming it um, correctly. And we're also looking for better support for multi-cluster um, um, workload support. Other than that, we try to implement the foundation to be um, process group CRD. And that sounds a little bit weird, but the idea is to have something as a wrapper around all the resources that are um, required for running um, foundation DB uh, or foundation DB process. And that allows us to handle better and um, deletion or exclusion logic. Um, and that is something that we want to tackle um, probably this year. And also we have to implement um, better HA support for the kubectl plugin to allow um, operators to uh, look into HA clusters um, in a more um, or in a better way. In addition to that, we want to like implement more features for backup and restore. So currently we have basic support for backup and restore, um, but we want to actually like um, have more features for that. And you can probably find more of all of that in the GitHub issues of the um, foundation B operator. And we also want to make use of the management API. Um, that is something foundation B specific that was added in, in 7.0. And the idea is that we don't have to call any external binaries because that gets pretty tricky in memory handling if you call another process from your um, operator, for example. And it's much more easier to just have um, a library that is can can directly be called. Yeah, and that's it actually. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ping me in the DOK Slack. And yeah, thanks for listening.